Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So as you can see, I'm doing another experiment with this Crooks radiometer here. This is the same radiometer that I broke and then fixed by using my Sprengel pump. I'll put a link to that video down in the description somewhere. But anyway, today I've got this suspended from a thread, which is hanging from the ceiling, as you can see here. And that is to reduce friction so that the glass can rotate freely. I've also got it sitting in a dish of water. That's because uh, traffic outside is inducing quite a lot of vibrations and the water dampens it. And you can probably see the two 300 watt lamps off to the sides of it. Now if it's correct that the radiometer works due to thermal recoil of gas molecules inside this envelope, then those recoiling gas molecules should fly until they hit the glass envelope, at which point they'll impart a force on the glass which is opposite to the force which is being applied to the radiometer vanes. If it is just light pressure pushing on it, then the glass should rotate in the same direction as the radiometer because the uh, friction would carry it along. Okay, so here we go. The uh, surface of the glass is a little bit dirty, so you'll be able to see little spots on it moving around if the glass moves. Now let's uh, turn these uh, lights on for just a second so that we can uh, show you which direction this uh, thing spins. So I think it'll get going too fast otherwise. So there you go. So it's spinning that way. That looks like counterclockwise to me. Alright, so let's turn them on for real this time. Okay, that is very bright. Let's see. And it looks like the glass is turning clockwise. See some spots on it that are going that way, and the fins are going that way. So that is equal and opposite reaction. Newton's laws at work. And the gas molecules are indeed flying off of the dark side, which is warmer, and striking the glass, causing it to go in the opposite direction that the fins are being pushed. <laughs> awesome. Now it looks like now friction has taken over and the uh, momentum has balanced out and the glass has stopped rotating again. So that means if I turn this off, it'll get very dark again. As this slows down, we should be able to see the glass going back the other way. Because now friction is dragging it along in the same direction that those are spinning. Indeed, I do see it. Let's see, you might. Yeah, there's a little spot coming around right there. It's going this way this time. And it stopped. And it's going back the other way. So that's probably because the fins were heated up. So now they're actually releasing heat. That's kind of cool. Now I'm going to actually turn this thing over. You see when it's turned over, the friction between the, instead of being the point of a needle, it'll be the flat bit of uh, that glass tube that you can see in there. So the friction will be much higher and relative to the glass, this thing probably won't turn at all. Another thing I'll point out is the little bit of mercury that's in there that uh, spilled over from the Sprengel pump. Uh, in order to get that out, I would have to get it to go up and through that tube. And that was just more trouble than it was worth. So I just left it in there and the mercury's not hurting anything. So now that I've got this set up in such a way that the uh, fins in there are locked in place to the glass, see they don't turn on their own anymore. Now, the effect of the thermal recoil should be completely canceled. And the only thing that can escape and put a net force on this system is the photons. We'll see if we can get this to spin at all with those. Uh, I'll probably have to let this settle down for a little while before we attempt that. Alright, so see you in a bit. Alright, so I'm going to set a timer for five minutes. I'm going to turn this lamp on for that amount of time. Now we'll see if that glass turns at all due to the light pressure. Uh, I think it's unlikely that we'll see it, but I do have a lot of wattage going into it, so it's gonna move. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Looks like the thread held up, and it didn't explode, which is good. I didn't expect it to, but 
Uh, that was the worst case scenario. Let's uh, go check on this video and see how it did. So here's the time lapse of the fins locked in position. And the first thing that I notice is that the glass is in fact turning. And it's turning in the opposite direction from what I would expect if it was indeed light pressure. Now I realize what must be happening here is the gas molecules are still bouncing off of the dark side and they're hitting the glass at a glancing blow so I end up with a vortex of gas flow inside the envelope. So in this case it's the gas which is spinning and the glass is ending up spinning in the other direction. So instead of the uh, little foil fins it's actually the gas molecules. Haven't completely ruled out light pressure, but I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. But light pressure should be much weaker than any of the thermal effects by orders of magnitude, so it makes sense that uh, unless I can cancel everything, I'm only going to see the thermal effects. So I'm actually re-uploading the video because I forgot to mention something. Uh, many people in the comments pointed out that the string uh, is kind of you know windy and the heat might cause it to unwind and that might be the reason why the bulb was turning. Well the thing is, this is actually not the first time I've tried to record this video. Uh, I did this video a few months ago and I used my laser for it. Uh, unfortunately most of that video got lost, but there is a clip on YouTube that I was using as like a teaser clip and I'll put that on the screen now. Now of course the light from the laser is very focused and there was not very much heating going on in the string and you can still see and you can see that the radiometer was still spinning in the same direction. So there you go. Uh, there might have been a little bit of thermal effect on the string but I had determined that the, uh, the string was not really that much of an issue. What was an issue though is the laser. I don't know if you can see this. See these uh, spots on the radiometer. The laser's light was far too concentrated and it was actually causing parts of the uh, blacking to vaporize. So that's why I didn't use the laser on this test. Anyway, I've got this uh, mercury here that I just cleaned up and you can see that I've got it collected into a bottle and looks like uh, almost exactly the amount of mercury that I started with so I lost very little. And there's probably a little bit in that jug over there. But I'll leave you with the uh, video of me uh, doing that cleanup. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.